I'm here to talk about movies and chew gum. And I have a lot of gum because I, well, I bought it at Costco and it's the packs. They're, they're very large. What is going on, everybody? Today on Karate Corner, we are watching the 2006 movie Mercenary for Justice. And it's a pretty solid addition to our series. And in all honesty, it's kind of watchable. That's not to say it's a great movie, but uh, put it on as some background noise at like a party and it could fit pretty well. But the year is 2006, and remember that, because movies are starting to look pretty high def, which could be a good thing or a really bad thing for Seagal, but we're going to find out, because this is Red Eye Reviews. (music) Grab your snacks, open the popcorn, and put away your notebooks. Because if you expected the plot to be deep, or make any sense for that matter, it's going to disappoint you. Hey, to be fair though, the director of this movie, Don E. Fauntleroy, went on record saying, and I quote, The story was confusing because there were four writers on this film and things were left over in between each draft. I pointed all of this out, but the producers did not care. Also, the producers cut scene titled 101 from the shooting schedule, that played right in the middle of the movie and caused a domino effect before and after it, and the scene was supposed to tie up the movie and allow the plot to make sense. I talked until I was blue in the face trying to convince them that that decision was a huge mistake and they did not care. The producers just hated Steven, and their whole existence was to destroy him and this film. End quote. Which is a little confusing as to why they would have produced a movie that they hated everything about, but... Here we, you know, here we are. Oh, Fauntleroy also claimed that the day he arrived on set for the first day of filming, the producers, quote, showed me a lawsuit that had already been prepared and was ready to file if Steven gave them any problems, end quote. So they must have heard of his antics on the set of Mercenary and uh, Today You Die, because he would arrive early, you know, leave late, rewrite scripts all over the place. And I guess they didn't want any of that. So they put it down on paper, which is kind of smart. But keep all of that in mind as I explain this plot, because if it doesn't make sense, well, now you know what's going on. CIA Dirty Deeds man John Drasham has hired several mercenaries to go into the French-controlled Galmoral Islands in southern Africa. If those don't sound familiar, it's because they're made up. But they are told the purpose is to aid the local population, but in reality, Drasham and a man named Chapel plan to seize and profit off of the island's oil and diamonds. Seagal gets upset when the mission goes sideways and some of his men go against his orders and take the French ambassador as a hostage. They then decide to blow him and his family up. Yeah, Jesus, I was not expecting that. But now we have to deal with that. So the French troops arrive and attack the mercenaries, resulting in Seagal's best friend Radio being killed. Maxine, who is a spy working for Seagal, pretends to be a journalist and tells him that she believes the CIA set them up. And as they're about to leave, Seagal confronts the head mercenary. I ought to fucking kill you right now, boy. I don't think so. Yeah, maybe not right now. Oh, well, maybe now is not a good time. That's pretty smart, actually. And Seagal heads back to the U.S. and tells Radio's family what has happened and promises to look after them. And just outside, he gets a drop on a couple of CIA guys who were sent there to kill him. Because I guess he knows too much, or I don't, I don't know why they try to kill him. They just try to kill him. But before he can get out of there, more mercenaries show up. We can all end up looking like Swiss cheese or we can go have a nice cup of coffee. What's it going to be? Let's, uh, let's go have a cup of coffee. And Seagal, you are surprisingly smart in this movie. Normally you would have been rewriting this scene to where you kick everybody's ass and get away unscathed. Man, it's almost like somebody brought a lawsuit to set day one to keep you in line. But Chapel needs another team of mercenaries again for a job, and he knows Seagal is a good soldier but probably won't cooperate, so he kidnaps Radio's family as collateral to force him to work for them. They then get informed that the new mission involves rescuing Kamal Dasan, the son of a gun runner, and the boy has been arrested and thrown into prison outside of Cape Town. You wanna dance, motherfucker? Get up. Get up! Let's get back to work. Yes, sir. That would be nice. So they start to think of a plan. And here's where it gets confusing, because CIA guy Drasham discovers the job, but he doesn't know who the target is, and he just wants to go after all these people. But I kind of don't get it, because he worked with them on the other jobs. 
So why would he not know about this one, or why would he not want a piece of the action? I don't get it. But anyways, he bumps into Maxine, and he just tries to, like, Jedi mind trick her. Honey, you work for me now. Are you expecting this to actually work? Like, you know that she's friends with Seagal, yeah? Oh, and Maxine already knows the real plan of the mission, but she tells CIA dummy that the target is the safe inside of a Cape Town bank. And the guy's like, yeah, of course, that makes sense. Bad guys love money. So the two of them go to a bank, and they wave around these very official-looking CIA documents. Like, this looks like an email printout on some fancy paper. Like, to uh, the South African government. Well, you spelled that wrong. You've, there's an N in that word. It's kind of hard. It's like a silent letter. I get it. Uh, from the State Department of, uh, well, the West Wing, my favorite show. <laughs> The CIA requests the South African Department of Foreign Affairs to tell Credit Natal Bank to assist us in South Africa. That's right, all of South Africa. Is that a problem, Mr. Bank Manager, sir? Hey, we also requested the South African Police Force, too. So clearly, you know, we're pretty official. This is absurd. Totally absurd. Oh, and I agree with you, but you still brought them in and let them inside, so that's on you. He also then proceeds to tell them everything he can about his bank. And Maxine, who totally doesn't still work with Seagal, just takes pictures of the whole place and all of the security. And then CIA guy's like, Maxine, you know Seagal, right? Yeah, I, I know of him. Sure. Okay, go and find out what he knows and tell me. Because remember, you work for me. Meanwhile, the mercenaries are like, Hey guys, you all know that girl Maxine? You know, Seagal's close friend. Okay, go and kill her, because she's poking around in our business, and we don't like that. Hey, who wants to volunteer for that job? I'll do it. Well done. Perfect. I totally trust you, because you're here against your will, and you hate all of us. So go kill your best friend, please. He then goes and meets his friend, and the two of them proceed to talk about everything the other one knows, and spill the beans about both plans. Is everybody seriously this dumb? Well, uh, apparently. Wow, okay, well, we'll just team up and save Radio's family and screw over everybody. How's that sound? And I'm gonna bring this guy named Bulldog. He's cool, though. He wants to betray everybody, too, you know? So Seagal goes to the little boy's room, and he gets attacked by a guy that works for, well, somebody. I have no idea who this guy is, but he wants to kill Seagal, and that's all we care about. Hold the phone. Those urinals aren't even real. That just, it just, like, fell off the wall. Wait, does that mean the toilet that Seagal just left a small baby in isn't real either? Do maintenance is going to be pissed? Detroit. Detroit, Michigan. How'd you guess? Yeah, that is not how I imagined Bulldog sounding like. But power to your friend. Let's go get some revenge on. So the CIA guy tells everybody that the target is the bank. And the entire police force goes to the bank. Because, you know, that official document that says they have to. The mercenaries then go to the prison to break that dude's son out. And it was a setup. By who? We don't know. No one tells us. But these are trained mercenaries. They're not dummies, okay? They're not going to walk to the center of the prison, exposing themselves to every possible angle to get shot at, and almost all of them die. Oh, wait. No, yeah, that's exactly what they do. And then when the final two get into a bulletproof car, they decide numerous times to open it and shoot at people. Guys, you survived taking a rocket to the side. I think those dudes' little guns don't stand a chance. You're going to be fine. Then Maxine calls the CIA guy, and she's like, hey, you know, a funny story. Turns out, it isn't the bank. It's actually this prison. Oops. And he just believes her. You know, okay, entire South African police force, we're, we're heading to the prison. And bring the bank manager, too, because the document said he had to help us out. So now with an empty bank, Seagal and Maxine just head over there. And the manager's not there. Like, legitimately, I think he went with them to the prison. They then go up to the guards and they say this. As you know, we've received some credible intel that there's a bomb threat here, particularly in the black vault. Yeah, that's right. There's a bomb in the super secure vault in the back. And we got to go inside and disarm that bomb. Well, that makes sense. I would verify this with my boss, but he's off raiding a maximum security prison. So I'll just let you in. They then go inside. And in plain view of the entire staff and all the security... Just break into the computer system and start stealing money. Also, the password is George. Yeah, of course it is. 
We then see the bad guy. He's starting to kind of get cold feet about his hostage. And he's like, I kidnapped these people, but Seagal isn't really doing anything I say. He's not even on the mission at the prison, which that's kind of the whole reason I did this. Well, I guess I'll keep these people alive still. Also, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty sure that little kid could kick your ass. Yeah, I'm pretty confident you're a crier. I prefer apples. And now the CIA guy and the bank manager both realize they were lied to by Maxine. No, how could she? I only told her she worked for me now. Did that mean nothing to her? So they make their way back to the vault with the entire police force. Meanwhile, Bulldog has disguised himself like a cop, pulling like an Ocean's Eleven thing here. Just waits for the police to get there. And then when the cops do get there, Seagal and Maxine shoot their way out of the vault, killing a lot of people. They run into Bulldog, you know, cop Bulldog. I'm afraid you're going to have to come with me, sir. Ladies first. And they just walk out. This dude just killed like a dozen police and transferred a ton of money out of the bank. But as long as one dude who's dressed like a cop walks them outside, we're all good. Who needs you inside? The bad guys are right here. And you ready for the best part? While Seagal was in the vault, he put money in the CIA guy's account and then placed the deposit slip on his unconscious body. The police walk up to him. They see that millions of dollars are put into his account and they just arrest him on the spot. Stop, criminal scum. You violated the law. Like what? How much more clear did it need to be that he was set up? I don't know, could the clue be that you found him unconscious? Well, whatever. They all escape. They go off to rescue Radio's family. They break into the facility and they start killing everybody. Apparently the house is soundproof because some of the guards inside are just walking around like they hadn't heard their friends getting murdered outside. And at this point, it took a while, but at this point the bad guy leader kind of realizes everyone's dead. And he gets really polite all of a sudden. Hello, is anyone out there please? Hello, anyone please? It's too late for pleases, sir. And then he talks with Seagal, and Seagal lets him get away. You mean to tell me you let that milk toast pussy get away? Uh, huh? Milk toast? Milk toast? You mean like French toast? I don't know what milk toast is. Well, whatever. We all saw this coming. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. Yes, this is terrible. But at least it's over now. Oh, I'm sorry. We forgot about the funeral service for radio. Yeah, but the editors have already gone home. Well, just get like your kid to do it. You know, he, he knows Photoshop, right? I promised I would bring him back with full military honors. And you know, this movie wasn't terrible, but that last scene, that was. But yeah, that was Mercenary for Justice. Honestly, not a terrible movie. The plot's ridiculous and confusing and relies on everybody but Seagal and Maxine to be super, super stupid. But overlooking all that, and it was somewhat decent to watch. And Seagal actually did his own stunts for once. There wasn't many of them, but he did it. So good on him for showing us he can still do... something. But now on to another segment, Red Eye Reacts. No, you cannot see it just over that hill. A fierce battle has erupted. Yeah, I can imagine that over there it's really exciting. I would much rather just think about it and not see it. When they're kidnapping this French ambassador and his whole family, their dog does not give a shit. Maybe if you had to kill somebody afterwards, it would be hard. See, with me, it's never hard. <laughs> God, I am immature. Yeah, don't put your face on the floor. Also, what was the point of hiding on top of the toilet if he just opens the door and you get down? Asshole alert. I never touch a gun. Sorry. That's your job. <laughs> Jesus Christ, is Seagal like a velociraptor? Yeah, kill him brutally and then turn his body towards the young child. You know, so he'll be scarred forever. Oh man, this movie is new enough to have high def. I never realized how much texture was in his face. 
That was the movie. Up next on Karate Corner will be Shadow Man. An intelligence operative discovers that no one is what they seem to be in the shadowy world of espionage. Uh, no shit, Sherlock? Are you saying this movie is about a spy learning that other spies are liars? Because that sounds amazing. And we will find out if it is next time on Red Eye Reviews. But until then, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment, a thumbs up, hit the bell. Tell me your super secret Cape Town password. Is it George? My personal password is Jorge, but it's spelled the same. So I'm thinking about changing it. But on that stupid joke, I will leave you guys until next time. And until that moment, stay happy and stay healthy.